Hello class, I hope you're having a good week so far. I wanted to take a few minutes to explain the, and clarify the paper assignment to you. Um, I have posted below in the announcement the assignment prompt, and this is the video that will help clarify and explain anything about the assignment that you might need. So reach out to me via email or post a question in the discussion board area. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to help you. And as you're working on it, um, feel free to do that at any time. I'm more than happy to help. So for this assignment, students will identify and discuss four current instructional trends in adult education. Preference should be given to finding trends in organizations or programs similar to your own. Example, kinesthetic learning, multicultural reading, universal design, disability accommodation. You can also use some of the components that you post in earlier discussions for the previous weeks if you want. Feel free to use some of the information from those discussion boards and the research that you found there. Your paper will cover the following five topics for each trend. So the way I would probably organize this is each trend with a subheading and then addressing each of the five components. So it'll be the trend, the five components, transition, next trend, the five components, and so on. So it will cover the history, contextualize the trend historically, the prevalence, present evidence for the prevalence of each trend, the merits and issues, discuss what research and experts say about the merits and issues within each trend, support, Analyze that research then and discuss who's the main proponent of trends and who, if anyone, is a detractor from those trends. And then your personal opinion. Finally, students will discuss their opinions on the merit of each trend and the future of each trend. And this part five can be in first person, so you could deviate from that third person. This paper should be, as always, in APA format, 12 point times New Roman font, double spaced, six to eight pages, that's roughly 2,100 words to 2,800 words. That doesn't include the cover page, that doesn't include the reference page. And at least five quality references as well. Create a name for each trend and use that name as the main section heading, and then use the words in bold above as subsections for each trend. That's gonna be the easiest way for you to organize it and to put it all together. Okay, I want to go into the actual assignment itself and discuss the grading rubric with you so that you get an idea of what you're going to be assessed on. What I usually recommend for students to do is to download the grading rubric and have it sitting next to you on your desk while you write this assignment because it will give you the best possible idea for exactly what it is that's going to be um, graded, what your assignment is going to be graded on. Okay, so if we go into the grading rubric, you'll notice that we have headings below standard, approaching standard, at standard, exceeding standard. In order to get exceeding standard, and that's an A paper, you need to go above and beyond what's asked for in those requirements. To be just at requirements puts you in the at standard column. A lot of students don't realize this at CityU, so definitely make sure and take a look at the rubric and what is asked for. So in order to be exceeding standard for this particular paper, um, for the first component, which is exploring instru instructional trends, it's 30% of your grade. It must be at standard, which is trends are identified, the research-based merits and issues of each trend are presented. And then, comparison and contrast between the different points of view on the merits and issues of each trend. So if you just identify and talk about merits and issues, um, that'll get you at standard. To exceed standard, you need to compare and to contrast the different points of view. So keep that in mind. Integration of research is the second heading. That's 20% of your grade. Paper is well researched and the details of the research are integrated into writing in a way that is clear and furthers the argument of the paper. Okay, so furthers that argument in order to be exceeding standard in that point. Scrolling down, writing and organization is always a component of your papers at CityU. In order to be exceeding standard, and this is 20% of your grade, 
has to have proper grammar, spelling, syntax, punctuation, style, writing clear, well-structured, focused, including an introduction that sets up the organization, a body that flows from the introduction and addresses all of the components of the assignment, a conclusion that restates the major ideas of the assignment, includes all requirements from the assignment description, clear point of view, logical sequence of information, and appropriate language and perspective for the assignment. That's at standard. In order to be exceeding standard, it must also include eloquent use of language, transitions, workflow, etc. So it's sort of that extra step that you go to make your, your paper that much better and eloquent. Prevalence is the last 10%, and this is that your trends are pervasive and current. To be at standard, these trends need to be pervasive and current and something that's happening readily. To be exceeding standard, at standard plus the student finds trends that are likely to last for some time due to their popularity in academ academia. Okay. Um, additionally, the last component that we always have um, are the critical analysis and the references in APA. So critical analysis is worth 10 points or 10%. And in order to be exceeding standard, your analysis shows a strong relationship between the evidence, course concepts, and or research supports every major point of the topic. Compare and contrast multiple perspectives and context, and opinions are stated as opinions. You're not stating your opinions as fact. The last component is references in APA. To be at standard, your resources are from credible quality sources. APA citation style and formatting are used with only minor errors. Writing is supported by the required number of sources. To be exceeding standard, you need to have no errors in your APA formatting and writing is supported by more than the required number of sources. So if you use five sources, you'll automatically be at standard. If you use six or more, then you fall into the exceeding standard category, and that will help you to figure out how you can sort of be on the end of the spectrum in which you're above the requirements for the assignment. All city U rubrics are organized this way, so if you're getting papers back and you're at standard and you're not getting the scores that you want, yet you're meeting all of the requirements that are in the prompt, take a look at this exceeding standards component because that is probably, in fact, where you are falling short. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. Keep up the great work and discussion each week. I value seeing your thoughts, your ideas, your opinions, and of course, the citations that go along with those. And this week, there are no peer responses that are required. But if you want to further the discussion, I'll be in there asking you questions and responding to your um, discussion posts. So please feel free to drop by and engage if it enhances your learning. Have a great week, everyone, and I'll talk to you soon.